let's go through this one here. Which of the following hormones is most likely to be elevated in this patient? Estrogen, progesterone, FSH, LH, or anti-malarian? A 55-year-old postmenopausal woman presents with complaints of vaginal bleeding and abdominal pain. On physical exam, her abdomen is tender to palpation, and a pelvic mass is noted. Imaging studies reveal a solid ovarian mass. Surgical removal and histopathological examination of the mass shows li lipid-rich spindle cells. Which of the following hormones is most likely to be elevated in this patient? Uh, okay. Um, a postmenopausal woman who's coming in for bleeding, and she uh, is tender to palpation and has an ovarian mass. Um, ovarian mass and it's lipid rich spindle cells. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm already, this is going to be a, if I saw this question, I'd probably be like, well, I don't know. Um, okay. I break it, I don't break even it know down. how to go from this, like in diagnosis wise. Yeah. Break, break it down. Look, look at it like this, right? This is how I would view it. Right. Break it down to kind of you know, the clinical setting, right? 55 year old postmenopausal woman that's bleeding is not good, right? No. Okay. And then also on top of that, right? Um, you know, she has abdominal pain. She also, right, a pelvic mass. And then she has a solid ovarian mass. Okay. So what ovarian mass or ovarian, you know, pathology, right? Or tumor can cause you to cause a postmenopausal bleeding. That's what you should really be thinking to yourself. Yeah. Huh um or even better okay so let's say you're like oh man i cannot remember i'm you know i'm not too good with ovarian tumors then the next thing is which one of these hormones can cause you to bleed if you're postmenopausal so okay so what i'm thinking with that is if you have a lack of progesterone that's what causes the sloughing off that's in that's in premenopausal so you're going to have a lack of estrogen that's going to cause, but okay. So in estrogen, I believe in postmenopause, you have more FSH than LH. Actually, I don't know. I would probably say, I guess, estrogen, because if you have a buildup of the endometrium, um, it could potentially like cause sloughing off of it. I don't okay. know. I'm liking your thought process. Do you have any kind of reason to change your answer? I mean, no, because progesterone to me would like maintain the endometrium and that would cause, so if you have an increase of that, I don't think so. FSH, I mean, that's already increased in, in, in menopause. And so I don't think that that would be like crazy. Luteinizing, horm luteinizing hormone, I don't think so either. And I, I don't, I never thought anti-malarian. Okay. that be the answer? No, um, I'll probably stay with estrogen. Okay, good. Let's talk about this, right? So that's going to be your answer. So 100%. Sometimes you just break it down to, to natural, normal physiology, right? So here, if I were to guess, right, um, work into this problem, I'm already thinking my diagnosis is granulosa cell tumor. And that, yeah, I, if I got that, I could have easily told you because we missed it last time that granulosa cell tumors secrete estrogen. Yep. So, yeah. So I don't know the histopath, you know, the histology of kind of granulosa cell tumors, but I can tell you on a symptom basis, right? She's postmenopausal, she's bleeding a lot, and now you have an ovarian mass. My only thing that I'm thinking about is the endometrial layer was building up. And remember, you know, when you're this old, right, in postmenopausal, you're not supposed to have estrogen, right? And so that's yeah. why you don't have any kind of periods anymore. So that means that there is something generating a bunch of estrogen, and there's only one tumor that does that, and that's a granulosa cell tumor. So you know, I knew that that had to be your diagnosis and the answer has to be progesterone. Does it make sense? That makes complete sense. Yeah. That makes yep. complete sense. And so yeah, here we go. Right. Um, granulosa cell tumors, right. Ovarian sex cord tumors that can produce estrogen and produce postmenopausal bleeding. Right. Cause the rest of, you know, if you think about other ovarian, um, cancers, right. They don't really have a lot of postmenopausal bleeding. They'll have the mass, They'll have, you know, sometimes they seed into the abdomen and things like that, right? But yeah. very rare does it cause postmenopausal bleeding, usually only granulosa cell tumors. So, okay, okay, that's good.